Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I want to show you how to make a flow-through worm composter using a 13-gallon kitchen trash can, some 2x4, and some trimmer line. Stay tuned. Welcome back, subscribers. If you haven't joined us yet, you can do so by clicking on the Green Shorts icon that's going to appear in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen throughout the video. This is one of my favorite worm composters. It's a two-tote system with a tote below to capture the leachate that comes out of the worm composter. Of course, the worms live here in the top. One of the challenges I have with this type of system, though, is how do I get the castings out of the composter? And the only way I've been able to do that effectively is by moving it all out and actually picking the worms out of the compost. Now, if you do a worm tower, which I have a DIY video on as well, the castings and the nutrients go directly out into your garden. But there still may be a case where you want to remove your castings and use them as a fertilizer or soil amendment outside of your garden, like perhaps in plants or around bushes. And another way to make that happen is something called a flow-through worm composter. In other words, the top is open, you put the worm, worms and vegetable matter in the top, and it moves down the worm composter and it actually comes out the bottom. By the time it's made that trip from top to bottom, it's ready to be used. And one thing we know about composting worms is that they like to live in the top 18 inches of soil. By the time the soil gets below that, it's too compact and not enough organic matter in it to make it hospitable for the composting worms. So one of the things that's going to be key to our design is what we'll call a compression zone. In other words, as the composter gets deeper, it's going to get more narrow. That's going to compress the castings into more of a soil-like environment. It's going to keep the worms in the top, and it's going to allow us to harvest pure castings out of the bottom. Let's get started. We're using a kitchen trash can because it's pretty close to the shape we're going to need for our flow-through worm composter. In fact, it's already tapered a little bit, but we're gonna taper it some more. The first thing we're gonna do is mark and cut about an inch and a half off the bottom of the trash can. But I'm gonna preserve this shape here on the bottom because I'm gonna use that to catch any liquid and soil that drops out of the bottom of the composter. I'm gonna saw through the first corner and then cut the rest of it with scissors. That's right, I said scissors. This is soft enough that heavy duty scissors will do the trick. Although I'm gonna be doing a cutting right down here in the notch where the leverage is the strongest. Now I cleaned this trash can as much as I could. This is actually um, something I'd already used, which is it's not going to matter that this was used for something else before. I did want to clean out as much of the residue that was in the bottom of it. And I used some sand to do that. Sand and a little bit of water, scrub it out. I got a little more scrubbing to do, which I'll do here in a bit. Set this aside for now. We'll trim the top back as well, but not until we get it in the frame. To create our compression zone here, here in the bottom half of the trash can. We'll cut in some angles so we can taper the trash can. I'm going to measure three and a half inches over and eight inches up and then connect those two points. I'll repeat this on the other three corners but only on the long side of the trash can. Once all my tapers are marked then I'm going to cut them. These tapers are going to allow us to close off the trash can like this, creating that compression zone in the bottom. The compression zone, of course, is going to make the worms not go down below this area, keep them up here in the compost. Now that our tapers are done, let's build the base. The inside dimensions for our base are going to be set by the outside dimensions of the top of the trash can here. So that is. 13 and 3 quarters by by 9. 
and the height is going to be set by 10 inches taller than the height of our trash can at this lower edge here. So 20 inches plus 10 is 30. To make our base we'll be using some 2x4 and some 2x2s and I actually just ripped down a 2x4 to create these legs. These will be the legs. We'll use the full 2x4 for the framing around the top. Next I'm going to cut the framing pieces for the top. And I'm actually going to cut four pieces at each length. Two for the top and two for where we're going to secure the bottom of the flow through worm composter. The bottom pieces will be cut out of the 2x2 two two material. Now we'll cut our 30 inch legs. This is a quick reminder that any pressure treated scraps or sawdust needs to go in the trash, never in the compost pile. And don't burn it either. I'll be using some reclaimed screws to put the base together. If you know anything about my neighborhood, it's that somebody's mowing their lawn or blowing their leaves every time I'm making a video. So, enjoy the background noise. I sure am. I'm spacing these screw holes toward the edges of the 2x4 so that when I come in from the other side I can do them closer to the center and avoid running the screws into each other. I'm actually going to flip this board around. They got that knot right in the middle of where the screws need to go. Now we'll connect the two sides. This is a little askew here, so I'm going to do one screw at a time so I get the first one aligned correctly. This impact wrench keeps putting my Fitbit to sleep. There we go. And there's the base. The next step is to fit the trash can down inside, screw it in, and then we'll trim the top off. But before I do that, I need to cut off these tabs here on both sides because they're preventing the trash can from going down as far as it could. I'm going to cut the tabs using a box knife. That's so that I can slide it out a little bit more to get at it more easily. Nice, even, steady pressure here is good. Don't overdo it. Before I can put the trash can in the base, I also need to cut off the lip, which I'll do with the scissors. We're moving inside, because there's a hurricane on its way. Alright, now that the lip is cut off, we're going to install the trash can into the base. I'm going to slide this in, get it even, and then clamp it in place. Then we're going to secure the trash can with a row of bolts. These are roofing bolts. They've got a sealed washer on them. You can use screws here just as easily.
I've left a lip here at the top because I wanted to make sure I got this nice and even. And now I'm actually going to trim this off so it's flush. I'm going to do that by cutting from the inside with my box knife. It helps to use a steeper angle with the blade like this versus like that to really have it sliced through the plastic. Also, you never want to have your hand right here when you're cutting. You always have your hand away from the knife in case it slips. You don't want to cut yourself. I kind of slipped out on the cut here, so I'm just going to come back, reestablish that cut, and finish it off. And if there are any high spots around the edge, I'll find them and trim them off. Next, we're going to determine where our bottom braces need to go in. And I'll do that by pulling in the sides of our taper and clamping them in place and using my straight edge to set the height. I'm going to transfer my line to the front of the board and then using my square mark it on the, the opposite leg. And I'm going to use those lines as my center point on the brace. Now we'll drill and screw in the brace. I'm going to use my square to transfer the line to the other set of legs. Now we'll drill and screw the other brace. Next we'll add the long braces, but we're going to inset them a little bit so they will hold our taper in place. We're also going to put them on a slight camber, in other words, instead of being flat, they're going to tilt down a little bit this way, so the inner edge supports a slight taper as well. And now the other side. Once the side bracing is in, it's time to secure our taper. Next, we're going to use our trimmer wire to do two things. We're going to use it to support the sides because there'll be a lot of pressure on this part of the trash can. And we're also going to use it to create a grid that goes across the bottom of the trash can. That'll be what supports the castings as it turns into soil as it comes down, while also allowing the castings to flow through the bottom of the worm bin. First, we'll mark out where our lines are going to go and then we'll drill the holes for the line. I'm going to put my string on half inch intervals. Now I'll transfer those lines to the other side. I'm also going to put two more holes here and there. And those will be for the line that's supporting the sides. Now make sure these line up. Four and a quarter, 
four and a quarter x1. Then transfer my inside lines to the outer edge of the board so I can see where to drill. Now I'm going to mark the drill holes. And then drill. The two edge holes will not go through this side of the bin. However, the rest of the holes will. And then the other side. Now it's time to lace up our grid. I'm gonna keep these a little loose for now until I get enough line all the way through before I tighten them up. Once I fed enough trimmer line through, I'm going to lock down the far side with a bolt. Now I'm going to pull the excess string back through to tighten up the grid. Here's a tip. Wrap the line around the bolt in the direction that it's going to be tightened. So in this case, I'm going clockwise. That way, when the bolt tightens, it'll actually naturally tighten up the line. As I'm tightened up, it's going to trim it off. Nice and tight, they'll support the weight of the soil very well. Um, I'm not so concerned about that little bump there because as soon as we get it full, it's going to push back against the side, be nice and tight. This opening isn't ideal, but it'll be okay. I'm going to put a couple of screws in the side here to connect the two tabs of the taper just to help it hold together better. For the lid, I'm going to use a piece of plywood, some small pieces of wood to use as brackets. We'll also put in some air holes and cover those with screen. Once I've got the borders drawn, I'm going to mark a center line and then the center point on that line and two and a half inches to either side. Those will mark my three air holes on the top which I'm going to drill with a 1 and 3 8 inch spade bit. I'm going to drill halfway down 
through the board and then turn it over and finish drilling from the other side. The half and half drilling method prevents tear outs on either side of the board. I'm going to clean this up with a little bit of sandpaper. The screen is cut to fit and then brackets are nailed on. I'll test the fit before I put the other two in. The end brackets are cut to size. We'll adjust the corners slightly here. So there's my design for a flow-through worm composter. This has been a long video, so I'm going to do a second video to show you how I set this up and put the worms in. And as soon as that video is done, you can click on the link right here to take you right to it. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for new DIY videos every Friday.